Good afternoon. Um, ooh, a couple of minutes late. Okay, but almost on time. Welcome to my broadcast. This is episode number 815. And the topic today is um, drinking the kale, drinking the kale, eating the kale, <laughs> doing yoga and prayer doesn't make it healthy. Which does it being healthy isn't doing those three things. Facing your inner expletive deleted is where the work is. And I'll explain that very clearly and it probably makes sense anyway. But I almost give you that nudge for a Sunday broadcast. This is a Sunday broadcast, hence the casual attire, by the way. So before I jump into the topic, let me introduce myself and then explain what I'm talking about. Um, hi, my name is Barry Selby. In case you haven't seen my broadcast before, my name is somewhere around this broadcast, if you, in case you haven't seen it. Um, this is Facebook Live, by the way, which I'll tell you about at the end where you can see the replays and also when you watch me on YouTube, in case you're watching there as well, just to be clear. I am an inspirational speaker, and besides being a relationship and, and love expert, I'm also a spiritual teacher, and I help women primarily help find balance in love, life, and business. Although right now it's becoming everybody because this topic is very non-gender based. I'm also the, the author of the best-selling book, 50 Ways to Love Your Lover, a book for singles and couples, men and women, about healthy relationships. So that helps you. I'll put the link in the comments at the end so you can check it out. Um, but I am a passionate champion for the divine feminine. That's what informs my work, is what drives my passion. It's also what started these talks over two and a half years ago now, called Messages from the Masculine, Inspiring a Feminine Heart. And today we're episode number 815, as I mentioned. And the topic today, today basically is, as a simple way of describing it, is doing all the external stuff, eating the kale, doing the yoga, even doing prayer work, isn't really gonna make you healthy. Not unless, not instead of, but not unless you deal with the inner stuff first. And this is the thing. I live in LA, in case you hadn't noticed. I've shared about that many times. And perhaps more than other places, there's a hell of a lot of yoga studios, yoga clothes running around that people wearing all the time. Even, even at Agape this morning, people are wearing yoga clothes. Um, there's a lot of health food restaurants and kale drinks and wheatgrass drinks and green drinks and all these different smoothies and eating styles and everything else, and people are doing all this raw fooding and yoga, vegan stuff and everything else. This is a very LA thing, I would say. However, <laughs> many of these people, oh, I do have to, I have to go there, don't I? Yeah, okay, I have to go there. I'm gonna speak on a very big level here to give you some thoughts. Many people who are fixated on what they eat and the exercise they do, still get sick, still get challenged physically because they haven't dealt with the emotional baggage inside. Now I'm gonna speak on a very deep level here for those of you who stay in tune. If you've seen my broadcast before, sometimes they go deep and this is gonna be one of the deep ones because what I'm gonna talk about is how our emotional state and our mental programming impacts our physical health. Stay tuned. So it doesn't matter how much you do on the health level, whether it's going to be the yoga or the exercise routine or you're running marathons or you're doing extreme sports or what your eating style is, whether you're eating keto or vegan or juicing or whatever it is you're doing, that's all well and good. But again, if you're not dealing with the emotional stuff, the internal stuff, the mental wiring that's running your life perhaps the wrong way, I'll get to explain that in a moment. It's not gonna necessarily make you healthy. Now, you might be doing better than if you didn't do that, so I'm not saying it's bad to do. However, if you do the internal work as well as, or beforehand, it makes everything else so much easier and more effective. As I said, I firmly believe that our mental and emotional wiring affects our, our well-being, it affects our um, physical well-being. I mean, Dr. Joe Dispenza, Joe Dispenza talks about this. Um, um, his name will come back to me in a second. Ah, it just went out of my head. I was going to talk about the biology of belief, which is, um, it'll come back to me. Ah, it went away. By the way, thanks for all coming in by broadcast. I appreciate you being here. I'm trying to remember the titles, the people. So, hi, Stacy. Thank you. I appreciate you agreeing. Nice to see you in my broadcast. So, let me explain part of this and then show you what you can do because frankly, I don't want to leave you hanging with this suspense of what it is that is happening. The 
And I guess the reason why this is bugging me is because I saw a lot of people at Agape this morning and I see a lot of people around in LA who seem to be so adamant and so rigid about, if you're not doing this, you're going to be unhealthy. If you're not doing this, you're going to be unhealthy. And I don't do, I don't do all that stuff. I don't, I don't eat lots of kale. I don't do yoga. I know I need to just for flexibility. But I do know that the inner work is what sustains me. I saw somebody this morning who was kind enough to say, I look really good. And I'm not being egotistical, but I know it's because I take care of myself internally. I don't mean, mean digestive-wise, I mean emotionally-wise. So let me lay some things on you, just to be dramatic. <laughs> Again, you may be doing all the healthy stuff, the right foods, in quotes, the right exercise, in quotes, all that stuff, but you may still be carrying around baggage from your childhood. And I mean baggage in the sense of emotional, mental, negative experiences. I was going to say crap, but <laughs> that's more descriptive. You may be carrying around stuff from past relationships. You may be carrying around stuff from past um, challenges in high school with peer groups. As I shared before in my broadcast, I went through several years of bullying and abuse from other boys when I was in high school. If I hadn't done the work, which I have done the work, done the work, and it still shows up once in a while to reflect on, to resolve the wiring and beliefs I took on by being beaten up and bullied by these boys, I probably would have been, lots, I probably would have been sicker many times before this. And I probably would have been sick, ill in other ways too. Because, as I said, what we believe about ourselves emotionally, sorry, what we believe mentally, and what we feel emotionally, let me, put, let me make sure those two are clear, has a direct implication on how we feel physically. Bruce Lipton, that was the name. The biology belief is written by Bruce Lipton. So Bruce Lipton, Dr. Joe Dispenza, at least two, if not more than people like that, who talk about this stuff about tying in the physical, mental, and emotional together. This is what I learned. That's actually I learned in my master's degree at University of Santa Monica, just so you know where I got this from and where I experienced this, was when we discover that when we work on stuff that's on the physical and emotional, sorry, on the, on the emotional and mental levels, it has a correlation and impact on the physical level. Let me give you this as a model template from that. One of the things they used to talk about in the program, because they've changed the languaging since, is that in our, in our um, makeup, so to speak, physically, mentally, emotionally, we have positive and negative experiences, as you might experience. There's also a, a median down the middle that balances between positive and negative. So for example, if you, are, if you wake up in the morning and you start judging how your day's going to be because you've got to worry about bills or you've got to see a ba- have a bad meeting you don't want to be in other stuff like that you ha- you wake up and your emotional state's going to be one of oh, harumph, judgment, anger, upset that sort of stuff well the mental is, is judgment so the mental and emotional levels are tied together what happens then you go out in your day is your day tends to go downhill because your, your physical state is tied together with your mental and emotional state all those three levels are sandwiched together like they're like tied together and they, the way they work so again, it doesn't matter how healthy you are, if you're not doing the emotional work, it won't resolve everything else. One, another piece in that model they talk about is, for example, and this is something they talked about years ago, it's changed now because of some interesting stuff, is if, for example, you decide that you want to lose 25 pounds in weight, perhaps maybe you're overweight and you want to lose the weight. This is just an example. If you're watching and it's not your case, don't worry about it. You can use the idea for yourself. But for example, somebody you know perhaps wants to lose 25 pounds in weight. They go on a diet and lose 25 pounds. But it's a 95, it's a 92 or 93% chance within five years they'll gain the weight back on, period. Basically, the status, statistics were, because it changed recently, I'll tell you why, is that people who go through massive weight loss will tend, sorry, 92 to 95% of people who go through massive weight loss will tend to put it back on within five years, that and more. And there's a reason for that. It's because the weight loss they're losing, the 25 pounds, has an associated mental and emotional component that are tied into it. Some people put on weight because they were sexually abused. And frankly, if they haven't resolved, and they, and they do this, which is interesting, people put, and this happens to a lot of women, and I think some men do it too, put on a lot of weight to hide their sexuality, even though they're becoming more visible because they're physically bigger. That's an interesting wiring thing. But the thing about it is, that weight that's been put on is to protect themselves because of the emotional mental upset that hasn't been resolved. Taking away the weight doesn't resolve the mental and emotional upset. So the weight comes back on automatically. I hope this is making sense. This is kind of, lo- it's very logical. So the, um, the reason why this has changed in the last couple of years is because 
some of the weight loss programs like Jenny Craig, Weight Watchers, and um, there's the other one, there's another one. What they've all done, <laughs> and why is it they are, is they now start including coaching. What they've now got is they have people who work for these organizations coaching the clients, which basically means that they are delivering not only weight reduction methodologies with the, with the food programs, the point systems and everything else, they're providing coaches for the clients. So that way when stuff comes up, emotional, mental baggage, because they're losing weight and that's coming to the surface, they have coaches helping them stay in, on track by helping them resolve those issues. What's it got to do with everything else? So if you're somebody who is working on trying to be healthy by doing yoga and drinking the, eating the kale and all that sort of help and all the green drinks and everything else, if you don't face your inner demons, your past upsets, your past wounding, with somebody who can help you, and I volunteer myself, that's my skill set, if you don't work through that inner stuff, then whatever you do won't help you. I, there are many stories, in fact, of people who, who are health nuts, who have eaten healthy, have been raw foodists, whatever it is, and then die of cancer or, have, or suffer cancer and have to recover from it because something else is going on. And, and I know it's controversial to say this, but I firmly believe that things like ulcers, cancer, other traumas in the system are largely, in, uh, largely enforced or, or inflate, um, inflamed by having mental and emotional, um, I keep saying when you use crap, but I almost say baggage is a better word, in store that hasn't been taken out. And the lack of resolution, the lack of healing of that emotional mental component will tend to lead towards more physical ailments doesn't matter how healthy you eat or how much exercise you do. So my um, encouragement, my recommendation is if you are aware, because it does take an awareness to know this, that there's some stuff in the back of your memories from when you were three, four, five years old or when you were a teenager or something else happened where you have wounded feelings from a past breakup or mental programming that you can't have what you want because of what happened when you were four years old. We have some of us carry that get help. Go seek some support from somebody who can coach you, guide you, express counsel so you can actually have what you want and change your life. It really is vital for your own health. I don't want to threaten you by saying your health will suffer if you don't do this because I can't guarantee, I don't want to presume, don't want to, I don't want to presume that, I don't want to lay that on you. But I would say that if you do get the support and do get the help, do get the help to resolve the emotional mental baggage inside, your physical health will maintain or get better pretty much automatically. This is maybe cutting edge in some ways for some people. It's what I'm speaking to more and more, even though I'm talking about this as a general topic. Yes, it does apply to relationship stuff because it's also about that too. But frankly, this applies to every area of your life. That emotional, mental, um, I'll say it's not a construct, but it is, a, it is baggage, it is stuff from the past. It's going to influence your physical health, it's going to influence your mental health, it's going to influence your emotional health going forward if you do not resolve it. It's vital. Oh, hey Katie. Yes, yeah, so I'm getting to the end of this one, so definitely watch from the beginning. It's, it's, I went a little bit deep on this one. Um, and so what I was talking about for the last few days actually has been a new paradigm of, of, of work I'm starting to do now. Because I've been talking about this for a couple of years in terms of this whole piece about the inner work. There's about the self, regardless, regardless or in addition to your relationship skills out there. This piece is more about what I'm talking about. Hello to you too. <laughs> I can hear that in your voice, Katie. I love that. Um, <laughs> um, okay, get back on point. You got me totally distracted myself. The um, piece I've been talking about for the last few days, I've been calling it, and it's really interesting, I'm calling it functional spiritual leadership because it's really about creating is having spiritual focus internally. And I'm not talking about bypassing, by the way. Yes, the inner work, exactly, Katie. But it's, it's how to be functionally effective in the world from a spiritual perspective, because it brings you in a much deeper place. And it makes life much more effective, much more, for me, joyful, because I find myself having much more joy in my life because I feel much cleaner inside. I went through an interesting process this weekend with my website goes sideways and some other stuff going on that's now resolved as of today. But for a couple of days it was out and I was looking at how do I handle that from a place of equanimity and balance. And I actually had a very peaceful weekend. A couple of times I was getting tempted to go, should I panic? It's like, no, I don't need to. Now, I've, I've had some practice with this one, so it's not like an instant result you get from doing this. But by working on the inner, inner pieces, the things that trigger you, and that's the other thing, by the way, if you go through your life 
and certain things, certain people, certain situations, certain experiences trigger you, and you know what they are, those are clues for the stuff that's unresolved. And all the unresolved baggage is going to contribute towards a lessening of health. If nothing else, you'll spend less time being in a good mood. So again, it doesn't matter how much kale, doesn't matter yoga or anything else you do, not dealing with the inner stuff is limiting your capacity to celebrate, to express, to be joyful, to have a fulfilled, happy, enjoyable life. So, I think those were, yeah, they were separate words. <laughs> so why would you want to do that? If you're focusing, putting a lot of investment into your physical health, but doing those different things, it's at least worthwhile putting some investment into your emotional and mental health as well. Frankly, we're not just bodies. <laughs> we, are con we are heart and mind as well, and that requires some inner work. And my focus with this, I'm calling the functional spiritual leadership, is really, it's a working title. It's not, it's not perfect yet, but it's what I'm talking about because it's about being functionally effective in the world with nuts and bolts spiritual teachings that puts you as a leadership role in your own life. It may go to, this may be the title I'm giving to the business teaching which I'm not doing because I know it's going to be business because it's time to wake up corporations to have a more of a functional spiritual centeredness in their leadership. Anyway, that's a sidebar. Somebody else said that to me today, so we'll see. So in the meantime, <laughs> my invitation to you is to reach out for support. I, I'm launching this as a new coaching thing. I did mention a couple of days ago, I'll just do it quickly here. I'm offering a new coaching paradigm where I'm offering a single session deep dive coaching session, which you pay for, followed by, if you like what I'm talking about, an opportunity to work with me for three or six months, and then what you pay for the first session comes off of the price of the other two sessions. So I'll put the link in the comments for you to contact me, because I don't have a website for this, site for this, and I have a page for this yet, I'm going to put it together at some point, but it's a contact form, you can reach out to me, I'll send you the details and you can check it out and have a look. You can sign up for that. Again, it's a single session. It's, it, it is a, it is a, you do pay for it, it's not a freebie. But it gives you the chance to really drive this forward. And you might get, I would like to think, some major transformation in this uh, session. So I'll put the link in the comments. I'll also put in the comments my self-love practice because my self-love meditation practice works. And this is part of the work. That's the reason I keep recommending it. It's a simple thing you can do, and it's fairly easy time and money-wise. But it gets you on track to start really reversing perhaps some old paradigms of judging yourself and limiting yourself. By doing self-loving, it puts you in a more positive direction. It sets up good intentions, create gratitude. It does a lot of things in the process. So my self-love practice will be in the comments. And as I mentioned at the beginning, my book will be there too. So contact form to reach out to me to find out more about my functional spiritual, liber uh, let's see, functional spiritual liberation? No. Functional spiritual leadership and the session coaching I'm talking about. And then my book and self-love practice. I hope it's been of value to you. I hope this has given some, perhaps provoked some thought for yourself and give you some ideas because frankly, it's time. And if you've got stuck with some stuff, if you're not feeling tip top in your own inner journey, reach out for support. That's what I'm here for and that's why I'm talking about this stuff. I appreciate you being with me. Um, if you haven't seen my Facebook lives before, here's some quick tip, quick links so you can find me. Um, I go live every day at five, I go live. I do live every day. I do my Facebook live every day. <laughs> Right here, seven days a week at 5 p.m. Pacific time on my personal page on Facebook, which is Barry Selby. Make sure you're following me. You can click on around this video somewhere. It should be three dots you can click on to click more information. It should be a notification to, when I go live so you can follow me there um, or watch me there. My replays go to my business page on Facebook as well as YouTube. So on Facebook, uh, my business page is barryselby.author. Please like my page and you can watch my replays there. And, or separate from, in addition to, I have a YouTube channel which is Barry Selby. And on that YouTube channel, I think it's youtube.com forward slash user forward slash Barry Selby. You can subscribe to my channel and there's a playlist on there called Messages for the Masculine where all of my videos leave. I say YouTube because one, it's a backup and for some people they like YouTube better. And secondly, the way YouTube lays out the titles, at least on desktop, I'm not sure about on mobile, the titles are much closer together so you can sort through more easily and find them what you want to watch. So maybe a suggestion. So again, links will be in the comments for um, a contact form to reach out to me for my new offering. Um, my self-love practice because it works and my book because it works as well amazing how it works so many works I thank you for watching I appreciate you being with me I hope this has been of sense made sense to you please take care of yourself because I do recommend and invite you to do that every day and I invite you to join me tomorrow I'll be here at 5 p.m. Pacific time new topic new day we'll see what it's going to be I thank you for watching I'll see you again tomorrow take care bye